So my senior year in high school, I almost got killed in a car accident. Wow. Mm. So uh, how? Coming from her house, three o'clock in the morning, man. What? Yeah, man. Three o'clock in the morning. Um, I left her house and. and how old um, was you at this time? I was seventeen. Okay. About 17. Yeah, yeah. He had just, just got his license. Well, yeah. Well, oh, oh yeah, I had. He got might have just got some. Man. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That nigga was sleeping. The boy was weak. The boy was driving. Hey, look. The next thing you know, everything getting cloudy. But baby, on my mind. Yeah. And look, three o'clock in the morning, you going to do something? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. And my wife is like, you know, hey, this is not where it's at. You're gonna get hurt. You so you married at a young age? I got married at 19. What? So that's before wow. you went to the, that's or while age. you were in the military? Before I went to the military. Before you went to yeah, the military. I got married at 19. Um, I've been with my wife since I was about 16. You know what I'm saying? High school. And, yeah, high school. And I almost Aww. got. Let me, almost, let, me, let me hear the story how you how you how you swept off the feet. <laughs> let me tell you, my boy was walking down the hall, skinny or not, with sw- it, with plenty of swag. That's one thing y'all Remember, better know. He was a class clown, but he, he was still probably cracking was, up. He was he was lean, mean, and he was nah, a sex hey, machine. It didn't go like that at all. <laughs> it didn't go like that at all, man. So look, I had previously met my wife two years before that. You okay. know what okay. I'm saying? So um I had went to a football game and one of her cousins who I knew, me and him was tight, and he was like, Yo, my cousin, you know, asking about you. And I was mm. like, you know, me being cocky, I was like, yo, where she at? You know what I'm saying? So I go up to her and give him my number. I was like, you gonna call? She was like, I don't know. I might. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's them. You know, so she called me that night and um, I mean, the rest was history, man. And, yeah. You know, um, my wife is, you know, she's, you know, she's a little bit older than me and, you know, she's real strong minded. You know, she was, you know, a woman woman at a very early age. That's you know what I'm saying? Hard. So she already had the mentally, you know, uh, strength to be able to guide me on and be able to handle me like, hey, look, this is what you're doing. You need to chill out. You know, she was like that person, you know, in my life. So my senior year in high school, I almost got killed in a car accident. Wow. Mm, so um, how? Coming from her house, three o'clock in the morning, man. What? Yeah, man. Three o'clock in the morning. Um, I left her house and, and how old um, was you at this time? I was seventeen. Okay. About 17. Yeah, yeah. He had just, just got his license. Well, yeah. And stuff. Well, just, oh, oh yeah, I had yeah, got work. Might have just got some. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. We don't oh, know. Yeah. That that nigga was sleeping. <laughs> this the is the three boy was weak. Hey. <laughs> the boy was driving. Hey, look. The next thing hey, you look. know, everything getting cloudy. Hey, look. But baby, on my mind. Yeah. Hey, look, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're going to do something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, you know, I had got out work at McDonald's, man. And, you know, I told my grandmother, I was like, yo, I'm about to go to my girl's house. And my grandmother told me, she said, Not stay to go. at the house. Mm. I said, nah, I'll be all right. Now, you know, I had been at work all day. Went over her house, man. And, you know, I left her house. And um, I was gone for probably about. An hour and a half, and she was blowing my phone up, but I had them already wrecked by then. So you wrecked out by yourself. Huh? Wait, I was in the country road, and you know the country road yeah. was dark. Yeah. Like, Did you and, fall asleep? Yeah, I fell asleep. Mm. I fell asleep at the um at the wheel. Um, I hit a ditch, and the ditch, I hit the ditch so hard, the airbag came out and split my head wide open. Wow. Huh? So, yeah, split my head wide open, and I went into this cow field where the cows and stuff would be at. So apparently, so what they told me was. They uh, said I crawled from the cow field into the middle of the road. How I got there, I don't know. But they said you had so much adrenaline, you probably ain't gonna remember it. They said when you get that adrenaline, you will do anything. So and somebody come in and so I laid out in the middle of the road for probably about two hours, and it was about bleeding out. No, so it was thirty about 35, 36 degrees. So that the doc- helped. So the doctor said, since it was so cold out there, it coagulated the blood right, and stopped me from bleeding. Cause my brain was like, like you can see my brain and everything. No, like, like, like it was crazy. So I get. I to didn't the, know an airbag can split your head oh, like that. Oh, the airbag that. come out with some force. Oh yeah, the airbag, the airbag will break your face, break your arm, do anything because it came out. It came out so hard, and I had my seatbelt on. The seatbelt popped, and as the truck was flipping, that's how hard it was. So I got a book that has all the pictures in it, and you can see when my forehead hit the passenger door and knocked the door open. That's how hard. Hold on, the pass. Oh, because it popped, it threw you as out I was of the flipping, seat. I'm going around. I'm, you know, I'm right. going all around the car, but I'm knocked out at this point. I don't even know what's going on. Couldn't you sue the car, um, deal the car owner or something because the seatbelt shouldn't have popped. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> I don't know what my mom and them did. If they got some money out of it, either way, I didn't see nothing. There, you know what I'm saying? But you know. Um, so I laid in the middle of the road, and this guy named Rashawn Trapp, mm-hmm. he almost hit me. He uh, plays professional baseball now. He almost hit me with his hummer because he thought I was a dead deer in the road. Wow. And from what he say, he say that, you know, I got up, I walked to his car, and he said he was freaking out, and he sat me up against his um, rim of his hummer, and he called the ambulance, and I got to the hospital. 
Now, when I got to the hospital, I didn't know nothing. The only person number I could remember was my wife. Hey. I didn't know her name. I didn't know nothing. I just remember that number. They called my wife. My wife, she hang up, called my grandmother. She must have been frantic. I could I could not. You know what? I, I, I never asked my wife about that day. I never mm. asked her because it was just it was just crazy. And um, they gave me about 12 days to live. Mm. They gave me about 12 days to live because they said I had swelling in my brain, blood in my brain. Like, they they wasn't expecting for me to make it at all. I was in ICU for a long time. Grab my um, prayers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most <laughs> definitely. Matter of fact, what's crazy was I had so many people come to the hospital to see me that uh, my wife. So, you know, in the ICU, they only let two people come in there. Mm -hmm. And my wife, uh, she wouldn't let nobody else come in there. You know what I'm saying? She was like, I'm not leaving. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have to come in here one at a time. And it's mm -hmm. probably about 60 to 100 people trying to come in there and see me. So wow. they had to come in there one by one to see me. And I was on so much morphine, I would press the button and people would come in. I'd be like, hey, and just and just go back to sleep. I don't even remember who all came at man, all, man. But, hard, man. but it's definitely a blessing, man, to be You're here. You're still so. here. God oh, had yeah. a plan. So oh, yeah. how long were you in the hospital for? How long did it take to recover from that? Uh, I was in the hospital probably about week and a half, two weeks. That's it from all of that? Yeah, about a week and a half, two weeks. Once I started to get back right. Um, and the doctors say it was a miracle. So they sent me home, and they said, hey, look, don't be around any loud noises. They had my head wrapped up. First thing I did, go to a football game. Mm. It was the first thing I did. Did I it went, affect I, you? I mean, I put earplugs in my ear and like not have the sounds and stuff come to me. And I mean, I made it through that. But you know, I had to learn how to like read and stuff. You know, again. read little books and stuff all over again. I had to like you know try to look at pictures and get memories and stuff back. But I'm not fully there even till this day. That's what I was gonna ask you. Sometimes, like you know, even doing comedy. Um, sometimes when I'm on stage, I have to like really think about what's going on and what's saying because. Sometimes I'll be talking and I just forget and I have to bring myself back, even though I might That's make it look That's a part of easy. old age, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, man, it's definitely a blessing, man, to be able to do what I'm doing. Man. That's man. a miracle. Yeah. So, you, all of a sudden, after that, go to the Army and get your strength back because you didn't tell. Why, Why did you go to the Army? Um, I went to, to the his, army to get his strength back. No, was he getting in trouble or something? Oh, I was like bad. That? I was definitely going down the wrong path. Right, um, man. Look, I was. Oh man, it was it was crazy. I would call my wife and I'd be like, "Hold on, I'm about to go on a mission." That's what I would say. We going on a mission, and she would just hear gunshots in the background, and I hang up the phone. She don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? All I hear is, "Hold on, real quick, I'm about to go on a mission." Boom, you boom, crazy? Boom, boom. After you went through a life threatening situation, Yo, I bugged out for a while. I bugged out for. I mean, like it was. Why? I, was, I, I have no idea. I just I just kind of felt like. Like you're invincible? I just, yeah, I was just like, I'm invincible. But like, when I say I bucked out, like I was, that was when the Mohawks was, uh, was popping. Mm -hmm. I, had the, I had a red Mohawk. I had the, I had the nose ring and in my still nose. Like, dude, oh, you, yeah. And you oh, a yeah, black dude? Still, oh yeah, black dude. I was bugging, man. It's crazy, man. It's, wow, that's hard. And even my wife to the day, she'll be like, what was wrong with you? You like, got like, pictures? What's going on? Uh, yeah, I think I, well, I don't know. My wife might have some, <laughs> but I ain't got nothing in my phone, man. I try to leave that, you know, leave that. Well, number, behind. let me ask you this. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk.